Alright, I was going to make a video about uh, DSD Plus, which is software that can monitor uh, digital trunked radio systems. However, before I do that, I figure I should probably make uh, a quick one that, that kind of explains what a trunked radio system is, or what trunking is. And trunking is a solution for um, sharing a limited number of radio channels or frequencies uh, with a large number of users or user groups and that's in contrast to a conventional radio system uh, which is uh, a little simpler and uh, this here is a, a very simplified or oversimplified image uh, depicting the, the principle behind a conventional radio system um, and so each of these channels, one, two, or three, uh, would typically be an actual radio frequency. So, um, you know, in the radio spectrum, you're allotted a uh, radio frequency, and that's the one that you use all the time. And it's straight across, you know, either uh, simplex or via repeater. And so in this example, uh, channel one that frequency has been allotted to uh, the fire department and uh, so if one of those fire trucks needs to talk to the other fire truck their radios are set to the frequency that's designated channel one and they'll key up and the other truck will hear uh, channel two that frequency has been allotted for uh, for medical use or EMS so one ambulance will key up on their channel and all and the other two ambulances monitoring that channel two frequency will hear what that one has to say and then in the third example there's what six six police cars in this fictional town that we're, we're using as an example and uh, one of those cop cars will key up on their channel three frequency and the other five will hear and then whoever needs to respond will then key up and uh, respond back on that same channel three frequency and those frequencies can be whatever you know the uh, FCC has allotted whatever that agency has chosen that's going to be that frequency for that particular channel so that, that works pretty well um, in smaller municipalities small towns uh, not not a whole lot of users I mean obviously it's gonna be more than you know two three or six but the principle is the same um, the the amount of radio traffic is low enough that you can utilize this setup uh, effectively and and it's fine you're not gonna you know be running out of out of uh, air time or air, you know, frequencies for for the units to talk. Now, when you get to a large city, for example, uh, this becomes an issue uh, because you know you're going to have more than six cops working in a large city, uh, and so an example of that would be here is. Um, basically every line that you see is a channel um, or a group of users who need to talk to each other and there's you know what, some three or four hundred different groups of users that need to be able to talk to each other so uh, it's not practical to try to get the FCC to allot you you know three or four hundred individual discrete radio frequencies out of the radio spectrum uh, you know there's not that much radio spectrum to go around for every major city to be doing this so we have to come up with a different solution um, and that solution is trunking <clears throat> now the idea behind trunking is that even though you have three or four hundred groups of users that may need to speak to each other uh, for example you have uh, law enforcement dispatch here um, you know, they're not all going to be talking at all the same time, and they're not all going to be talking as often as everyone else. So the dispatch here is going to be, uh, you know, pretty busy. They're going to be talking pretty often, dispatching, you know, law enforcement calls. Uh, the records check is going to be pretty, you know, pretty well used. The uh, police are constantly running license plates and IDs. Um, however, for example, the medical examiner, 
probably not uh, not as commonly used. Um, you know, o- only so often does the medical examiner is are their services going to be required. Um, you know, uh, the bus, for example, is going to be pretty pretty often used. However, you know, these sewer and water people may may not be on their radios nearly as often. And taking advantage of that fact, because for example, if you had uh, if you had one discrete individual frequency allotted for every single group of users on here, the frequency that's being used for the street repair folks or the you know um, sewer cleaning folks is probably going to sit idle and unused most of the time. Only so often do they actually need to talk to each other. Whereas, you know, that police records check, they're, they're constantly on there checking records. Um, and it's going to be used all the time. Well, you know, if you're sharing multiple frequencies, I'm sorry, multiple groups of users among a smaller number of frequencies, you could have two high volume uh, groups, such as records check and dispatch, competing for airtime. For you know, meanwhile, that the sewer repair frequency is just sitting unused and idle, and that's something that could be used for for someone who needs it, uh, who has you know they have a higher demand. So, the way that trunking works is that we allot um, say twenty or so frequencies for the three to four hundred users. So right here down this list. Each of these horizontal lines is one FM frequency from 770 some megahertz to 860 some megahertz, and uh, the radios are computer controlled. One of these frequencies is the control channel, and the master controller basically acts as kind of like a you know directing traffic, and each user that keys up a microphone, rather each each uh, each user in a particular group that keys up a microphone on their radio is tossed into the next available open frequency. So right here, these are user groups. So here we have the fire dispatch, we have animal control. Um, you know, the animal control people are talking to each other right now. The fire dispatch people are talking to, to each other right now. However, all of these empty spaces in between are unused radio frequencies that are open and available for the next user uh, to be able to jump into and, and use that frequency temporarily. <clears throat> You'll notice if you pay attention to a particular user group, these are called talk groups by the way, so they're like basically organized into like virtual channels. So the Department of Public Safety for this college has a virtual channel, and that's for their dispatch. And right now they're on 852.1 megahertz. Well, now they just got tossed up here to 771.13, um, and the next time they key up, they'll they'll appear somewhere else. And basically, the way it's working is that the the computer controlled radios are all following each other so the virtual talk group or the virtual channel um, is followed by each radio that's assigned to that channel or that talk group and it's it's uh, regardless of the frequency so that whole group gets steered around and and when I'm saying that they're, they're switching. This is like in milliseconds. It's very fast. Um, gets steered around in milliseconds to uh, whichever open frequency that the computer dictates is, you know, suitable for use and just, just assigns them one on a moment-to-moment basis, basically per transmission. So uh, the end user doesn't realize that this is happening. They hear their conversation uninterrupted uh, you know, as if they were on one original conventional channel in the first setup that we that we illustrated, um, 
they hear the conversation uninterrupted, not realizing that their radios are actually jumping around to all these different frequencies. Um, and, you know, that, because you remember that list of three or 400 users, well, we're only seeing, what, maybe five, six, seven, eight at a time that are physically keying up their microphone at any given moment in time. So with this technique, we can, you know, share a pool of 20 frequencies with a large group or a large list of, of three or 400 user groups. Um, and as long as everybody's not trying to talk on their particular user groups at the same time, uh, this principle will work. And, you know, so obviously you have to scale how many frequencies you need versus how many groups you have versus how, you know, how busy those groups are. Um, but, you know, as you've been looking at this, if you, if you follow any particular talk group, such as one of these hospital groups or these, you know, dispatch groups as it's jumping around, each of those times that you see that pop up, that is a radio transmission back and forth between different users. And, uh, they don't even realize that they're jumping around, but, um, it, it enables their conversations to go on seamlessly uh, without needing three or four hundred, you know, discrete individual radio frequencies assigned. So hopefully that kind of gives you a, a quick overview of the principle behind a trunked radio system.